For more than 30 years, Chef Larry Landsberg has studied the cuisines and many cultures and today creates delicious meals from around the world. He's a personal chef and owner of the Shoreline Chef, and we welcome you to Connecticut Style. Well, thank you for having me. So, uh, you specialize in gluten-free, and uh, that kind of came about because of your wife. Yes, my wife re found out that she was um, sensitive to gluten. And so we had to start recreating a lot of her favorite recipes uh, in a gluten-free manner, um, which means you can't use flour, you can't use most of the things that are in your refrigerator. Well, anymore. you were saying even soy sauce, and most yeah. people wouldn't really have yeah, thought of that. Yeah, things like soy sauce and husin sauce, if you go to a Chinese restaurant, have gluten. So you end up reading, recipe, uh, reading labels all the time really? to make sure there's no gluten in it. And you are able to find gluten-free versions of almost anything. Is that right? Today we're going to be using a gluten-free pasta that's made from quinoa and cornmeal. Wow, typically you would think flour, pasta, flour, but you pasta. have options. Yep. It looks like pasta. We have a lot of options. It tastes like pasta. Okay, well, let's get going. Okay. I I have, what I've got here is some onions that I've just started to brown a little bit. Okay. And I like to get the onions brown. That's when the flavor starts to come out. And when you're cooking gluten-free, you really have to develop the flavors to make up for the things that are missing. Mm -hmm. We're going to take the chicken breast that I've cut and put in this. This is not flour. It looks like flour. It looks just like flour. But what this is, is a combination of garbanzo beans, tapioca starch, potato starch, fava bean flour. Wow. And it acts like flour because it will thicken and it will react like flour. It's a little bit different, so you have to practice with it a little bit to make sure that you get the and result you want. where could you, you find this flour? Anywhere now. Oh, okay. It is amazing what's happened in the last couple of years with gluten-free cooking. If you go into your favorite supermarket and you look around, you're going to find a whole section now with gluten-free products. Uh, All right. it, it's almost an epidemic of people that, that are eating gluten-free now. So we're just going to put a couple more pieces in here. Okay. How much would this serve? How many people? This will serve at least two people. Oh, okay. And then we're going to give a little salt, Okay. a little pepper. And we're going to get this going a little bit. And then I'm going to have you help me in a minute. We're going to put some of these things together. Sure, I don't even recognize these things. That is a shallot or shallot. Shallot? Yeah. Shallot. <laughs> shallot. Um, it is from the, the onion family. It's a okay. little bit milder. And you use it like an onion, but it's a, sort of a cross between onions and garlic. Oh, okay. So we're going to let these brown. So you've prepared the, uh, the gluten-free spaghetti ahead of time? I have. It's, it's about half cooked. I'm going to finish it in the sauce. Oh, all right. Which is a trick that most Italian restaurants use. People wonder why your dishes don't taste the same when you go to a restaurant. They half cook the pasta. Uh -huh. They put it in the dish and it, abs and it absorbs the sauce instead of more water. So it's much tastier. Oh, so we're just going to flip these tip. over. So you'll find that in most Italian, most good Italian restaurants are going to finish the pasta in the sauce. So we're just going to flip these over. There we have about two minutes. Okay. And I'd like you to throw in some of the uh, sun-dried tomatoes. Oh, these are my favorite. About how much are we putting in about here? About half of it. Okay. Some of the capers. These the artichokes. Capers. <laughs> half or? Yeah, half of that's good. Is it about a quarter of a cup, yeah, would you say? Yeah, that's good. And throw in some of the artichokes. The artichokes. Ooh. We're going to put in a little red wine, a little white wine. Let that cook down. We're almost done. I and see some little, lemons. Is that a finishing lemon's touches gonna fish, there? A little bit of lemon, a little bit of parsley when we're done. And I'm going to put just a little bit of chicken broth in here to finish it up. Now, what if you just used grilled chicken instead and you didn't even need the breading on it? Is that an option? You can do that, too. The, uh, using some breading on it actually thickens the sauce a little exactly. bit, so you're not uh, using a lot of artificial thickeners. So this is pretty much done. We're going to give it a little bit of, little hit of the parsley. And then a little squeeze of lemon juice. What do we do with the shallots? Are oh, you they were, those they were in there already? with the okay. onions, yeah. Got it. A little lemon juice and just going to let that cook for a minute and we're pretty much done. We can now, place Now, let up. me ask you, do you go to people's homes to do, I do the cooking? I do that. I do. I cook for people. Uh, I cook weekly meals for people. Um, I cook dinner parties. And so you want to have some friends over and you don't feel like being in the kitchen all night, I'll come and do all the shopping and the cooking. and. What about the cleaning with, up, Larry? I leave it clean <laughs> when I go. That's great. Um, so what's another uh, gluten-free specialty you might cook um, for your wife? I've been doing a lot with, we do a lot of pasta dishes. We do um, 
The other day I made uh, cabbage, stuffed cabbage, and it usually has flour in the, in the and I use the uh, garbanzo bean flour. Um, I made fried chicken with soy flour. And can you tell the difference? No, you That's really great. can't. If you do it right, the problem is this stuff reacts differently than regular flour, so you really have to spend some time working with the product. trial and error, right? Yeah. Well, that's going to cook, and I know that you have one made with flour, mm -hmm. real flour. Right. So we're going to try that in the okay. end of the show and do a little comparison. Right. One last thing we're going to do is put a little pasta in here. All right, sounds great. And then we'll finish that up, and we can give it a try. All right, Larry, that sounds great. We're going to do that at the end of the show. Of course, you can find the recipe on WTNH.com. Up next.